Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Huang Dandan. Today, the subject the subject of my presentation is depression among college students in China. The first things I'd like to talk about what is the depression, because sometimes it can be a lot of harder to understand. One major source of confusion is the difference between having depression and just feel feeling depressed. Almost everyone feels down from time to time, getting a bad grade, losing a job, having an argument. Sometimes there's no trigger at all. Clinic depression is different. It won't go away just because you want it to. It lingered for at least two consecutive weeks and significantly interfered with one's ability to work, play, or love. Depression can have a lot of different symptoms: a、uh, low mood, loss of interest in things you'd normally enjoy, changes in appetite. Feeling worthless or executive guilt, sleeping either too much or too little, poor concentration, loss of energy, or recurrent thought of suicide. If you have at least five of those symptoms, according to psych psychiatric guidelines, you qualified for a diagnosis of depression. Depression is the leading cause of disabilities in the world. Now, I'd like to look the prevalence of depression. In China, almost one in fourteen people struggle with depression. Relevant research indicated that approximately more than twenty percent of Chinese college students suffered from depression. During the two years followed up period, and this ratio has kept going over the past ten years, which is from twenty five point seven to thirty one point two percent. In China, the mainstay of treatment for young people with depression is pharmacotherapy and psychotherapies. However, because of the Side effect and resistance of these medicines, the intervention of antidepressant has very limited effects for most depressed college students, and psychotherapies can be inaccessible and expensive for most low-income or mid-income areas. Also, approximately. A third of people with depression remained non-responsive to both treatment. Therefore, new cost-effective treatments are urgently needed. Risk factors have been various used to describe risk mechanism as well as risk trigger, moderators as well as mediators. And causal risk factors. It is a very important term in epidemiology. For now, there are many kinds of risk factors, including biological, genetic, environmental, psychosocial, and even behaviors. So, physical inactivities or sedentary behaviors are potentially modified. Variable risk factors for the one set of depression. Okay, the result is we can see、um, aerobic exercise and resistant exercise are more widely used type of exercise therapies in depression, which different intensity, frequency, and volume. For example. The aerobic exercise is a more effective type of exercise therapy, with the optimal intensity of fifteen.
percent to eighty five percent of the maximum target heartbeat, and three to five times per week. As you can see, the main mechanism of exercise include regulating cytosine production, increasing neural transmitter released, and so on. There are a lot of things. So, in conclusion, exercise therapies will be. A very important and effective means for the treatment of depression in the future, but there is still a lot of work to be done to make exercise therapies widely recommended in clinic. For example, it deeply verifies the efficacy of resistant exercise or aerobic exercise, and explores optimal. Protocols of individual or group exercise therapies in the college population. This presentation aims to explore the status of pressure and efficacious exercise intervention options to increase physical activity level and decrease sedentary behaviors for Chinese college students. Suggestions for future research are also discussed. At the end, there are my reference available. That's all my part. Thanks for coming. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me.